Welcome to Wake Up West Palm, where we talk all things downtown West Palm Beach, and you get to meet some of the incredible people and businesses in our beautiful community. And today I am joined by Chef Ben Lubin, owner of The Blind Monk. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me on the show. This is so, your location is beautiful. Thank you so much. It's such a vibe in here. That's what we're trying to do. I love it. So tell us about The Blind Monk. The Blind Monk. Well, we're just your casual neighborhood restaurant. The place everybody wants to be, hopefully. Um, no, this is the culmination of, you know, my point of view on food and wine and cocktails and hospitality. Um, I put everything I know and have into it. And I hope I've created a place that um, the neighborhood loves to go to. It's their go-to place for dinner, for drinks. Well, it's... I mean, it's kind of like a staple of West Palm. You've been here for so long. This is your second location mm -hmm. downtown. So what was that like, just moving from one location to another? Yeah. Yeah, so our August will be 14 years downtown. Um, and it's 14 years of evolution. So the Blind Monk today, I think, is irrecognizable from the Blind Monk that opened in 2010. Although there are some key elements that, that remain. And, and you know, it being a welcoming place um, hopefully is, is chief among them. Before we kind of dig yeah. into everything that you offer here, you do have an interesting background that I'm not sure everyone is aware of. You come from, I mean, how does one go from serving as a U.S. Marine to owning a wine bar? Well, you know, it's like, uh, you know, when you're a teenager and, and your parents didn't let you do something, you go to college and you go crazy, it's like rebellion. I think I rebelled against uh, the Marines, I'm like, I'm gonna open a wine bar and that's gonna be the complete opposite um, lifestyle. Um, of all the businesses to choose, that's just so Well, you know, I had spent a lot of time away from home. I mean, I, grew, I was born in West Palm at Good Sam. Just take Olive Ave, you go right there, right to my delivery room. Um, and went, you know, through high school, I lived in West Palm. And then I was gone for a long time. I, I was in the Marines. I, I lived and worked overseas. I got traveled a lot. So I got to see, you know, and experience cultures and cities that were very different than West Palm. But when I did come home, there wasn't really a place I loved to go to. So I sought to create that. So that was sort of the genesis for the Blind Monk was, was creating the place I wanted to come home to. Oh, I love that. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. And it's crazy that you actually were born in West Palm because most people are not native to West Palm. Uh, but it's awesome that you stayed here and that you created this incredible place that people do feel very drawn to. It is a very unique feel when you first walk in. So how, when you think about all the things, the different iterations that you have had and, and some of the things that you've kind of infused into the restaurant to create this kind of vibe, what are those aspects that are really important to you? How do you pe want people yeah. to feel when they come in? Well, it's, all, it's the details. You know, it's the focusing on, on every small detail has a synergistic effect and makes the whole much bigger. And so I always say people may not be able to pinpoint why they love being in the Blind Monk, why they stay for so long once they're in here. But it's because we're constantly thinking about the lighting, the music, the, the temperature, the, you know, what the menu looks like, what, you know, every last detail. Um, and that is what creates the Blind Monk experience. It's not, it's not anything at the macro level because there are lots of places where you can have delicious food or a great glass of wine or, you know, but why is it that when people come to Blind Monk, they stay for three hours and forget, you know, they leave their worries, you know, on, on Olive Avenue because we, you get immersed. We create this, it's an experience we're creating. Um, so it's lots of little uh, minions running around behind the scenes to create that for our guests. So you've expanded the menu quite a bit. Um, tell us a little bit about how did you go from, I mean, first you open a wine bar and now you're a chef and you are very focused on the food. So what has that transition been like? Yeah, we, I mean, the original location was, was very small with a limited kitchen, um, limited bar. Um, so it, it just, 
it, we weren't able to fully realize what we wanted to be or my vision for the blind monk. So here we do have a full kitchen, we have a full bar, so we have a outstanding cocktail menu and we're able to put out dishes now that I've always wanted to but couldn't because we didn't have a hood, we didn't have the equipment to do so, we didn't have the space to do so. So um, we're focused on, you know, it's pretty simple criteria. Everything we do, it's, it's all about simple but doing it right, just like Italian cooking. You know, it's the best ingredients, it's a little bit of technique, and, and that's what, to me, is, is the recipe for success. So we want healthy, delicious food you want to eat all the time um, that makes sense, to, that needs wine to make it even better. And um, that's what we're focused on. And obviously, I, uh, influenced by my, my travels and where I've lived and worked and our local community, you know, people ask a lot, well, what's your cuisine? And it's modern American, and what does that mean? Well, modern American is, you know, reflects who we are as a country, a country of immigrants and all those influences that we have that, that you know, so we're not Italian or French or Mediterranean, but we do have influences because that's what influences our community here and our country as a whole. So that's modern American today is, is, is you know, embracing, um, you know, that idea that we're a country of immigrants and that, 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 that contribution has, has made us a, a richer, more interesting society. If someone comes in for the first time tomorrow night, what do they have to try on the menu? You know, it, people are different, as you know, and so there, it's not a, a one answer for, I think really it's our job to engage that guest and sort of see how they're feeling. Some days you want, you know, you know a spicy tequila drink. Other days you need, a, you know, something with bourbon and old fashioned. The time of day you come, you know, matter. Sometimes you want a spritz, sometimes you want a glass of red wine. So, you know, um, I think my, the way I envision people experiencing the monk is you come in, you start with like an aperitivo, um, which is like a, a, a nice, refreshing, low alcohol cocktail. It could be a spritz, it could be, um, you know, something we do with ginger beer and a light aperitivo, or it could just be a nice glass of sparkling wine or a crisp white wine. That's how you start. Like, sit down, have an aperitivo. Then decide what you're gonna eat um, and decide what wine you wanna pair with it. You know, that's sort of the flow. And then, of course, you might do that a couple times and then dessert. Um, what, are you, what is one of your favorite dishes? What's my, my, you know, I like the newer stuff because some of the classics we've been making for so many years that I, um, but I, we just put on a lemon anchovy spaghetti that I love. It's simple, um, but full, briny and lots of lemon and, and just, um, just like scream summer and coast um, and pairs nicely with, with, one of our many acidic white wines. Um, I love our roast chicken salad. It's just a um, roast chicken breast on a on a crisp salad with carrots and cucumbers and peaches and manchego cheese and so it's. Um, that sounds nice and light. yeah, nice and refreshing. Um, How do you select? Okay, so I feel like there's yeah. so many wines to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> How do you select which wines do you even yeah. carry here? So yeah, the wine world is, is huge and you have to have a, a way of sort of narrowing it. And so we do have a wine point of view and for us, it's about only sourcing wines in which the grapes are grown sustainably. And oftentimes that's organic or it's biodynamic or it's practicing. And then it's wines that are made with minimal intervention by the winemaker. So the winemaker is just you know, playing, uh, you know, a very small role in turning those grapes into wine. So no manipulation, no use of new oak, no acidification, no chapitalization, nothing that, like we want to taste the 
the, the truest expression of, of terroir, of vintage, of varietal. And so that helps us narrow our focus. And then within that, um, we want everyday drinking wines. So we want people to come in here and be able to afford, afford that. So we're focused on great, but sometimes lesser known regions that offer great value. So you're not substituting quality, but you're gonna try something um, delicious and interesting. And we wanna sort of be ambassadors to you know, these lesser known um, areas that make great wine. Um, so you will never find a Pinot Grigio on our menu. You will never find a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand or California. You know, some, you, you know, you won't find really a Chardonnay from California. You won't find those standards you see at, at most places. Not that there aren't great representations of those, but because the wine world is much bigger than that. We'd be doing our guests a disservice if we didn't introduce them to some of the really fun, interesting, cool, delicious stuff out there. It's all, I feel like it's such a unique space, like everything that you do. It's, you're very thoughtful around how you're curating the menu, the food, the wine, oh, the yeah, experience. Absolutely. It's just very intentional, you can tell. Yeah, thank you for noticing that, absolutely. Everything we do is intentional and thoughtful and there's a reason for it. Um, you know, we, I care deeply about what we're doing and um, it wouldn't be worth it if I was not ensuring that everything we did sort of had a purpose. You do it with so much love. It's like just shines through. I love it. So uh, do you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, we have a really exciting guest today. Um, someone who has helped us evolve um, our brand in, in such a interesting, cool, thoughtful, and appropriate way. Um, you're gonna speak to him, he's got sort of a, an extraordinary resume. Um, <laughs> but his best work obviously has been The Blind Monk. So let's bring in uh, Jeremy Pelly. Jeremy, so great to have nice you, to thanks you, so much. Thanks Ben, appreciate it. Thanks for so, having me. Yeah, so I mean, obviously you're, uh, you're in good company. Indeed. Helping to create this incredible brand. So Indeed. tell tell us about you. A little bit about me. Um, my background: I was born and raised in Lubbock, Texas. I grew up um, honestly skateboarding saved my life. Uh, it introduced me to everything cool culturally, and so from that kind of fertile ground um, in the I'd say late '80s, early '90s, I really got exposed to art and poetry and like vegetarian diets and everything you can imagine, like culturally, like across the spectrum. And that interest in, in all things culture led me ultimately to study anthropology in school. I never actually studied design, believe it or not. I've, I've, I've been swinging all this stuff, making it up <laughs> as I go along. And it's well, working you're good out. At it. It's working out. Yeah, it's like I've always had a creative penchant. My mother was an artist, or she still is an artist. And um, so that she, and she was medium agnostic, which led me to be think like that same way. I'm, I'm not only medium agnostic, but I'm industry agnostic. So I'll work in hospitality with someone like Ben on his restaurant or all work on um, packaging for, you know, uh, chocolate or I used to live in Oregon. So I worked in the cannabis industry, the burgeoning cannabis in industry at one point. And so I, you know, I have a broad, broad spectrum of, um, of uh, experience now at this point in the branding uh, arena. And for a short time, so what really got me into it was a, uh, a little experimental ad school at an agency in Portland called Widening Kennedy. Uh, the, the school was called WK12. From there, I got um, hired at a, a little hotel that became a big hotel uh, called Ace Hotel. Um, Ace Portland was my first location to work on. I did Ace New York, Ace Palm Springs, and then I quit to start my own agency, which I started with my friend uh, Fritz at the time in uh, 2009, and we ran it for 11 years together. And around 2020, when things went haywire, I exited the company. They're continuing to run it. I wish them well. And now I'm on my own, living in West Palm, living the dream. Doing your thing Indeed. and hanging out and getting to help this incredible business to thrive. Indeed. So how did you guys meet originally? I can tell the story. It's a fun sure. one. So I like to think of it as a benevolent bait and switch. And what I mean by that is I had my resume on Indeed.com and Ben had put out the request for um, social media help in particular. And so like when I, when I 
when I looked at the thing, I was like, I don't necessarily want to do social media, but this place looks amazing. I was like, this looks like something that would have thrived in Portland, you know, like years ago when I was there. And, and I'm, I've worked in a lot of restaurants and I'm a restaurant snob, absolutely. So I was like, okay, this is cool. I was like, I wonder if I could approach them as the social media help, but then sneak in some branding help instead. And so when the first time we met, is I brought it up right away. I was like, hey, I would love to do this. I was transparent. It's a, that's why I called it benevolent bait and switch. I wasn't trying to you know, be shady or anything, but I did have my own agenda, I'll be honest. And, and uh, luckily, he saw the same thing. He was like, yeah, you're right. Let's, we totally need help with our menus. We need help with our, like, telling our story better. It, we're, we're evolving. We're becoming a new, new, bigger iteration of what we've been. We've been around for 13 years. I, I'm, I'm new to West Palm. I'm only here for two years so far. Um, me and my wife moved here in 2022. And... Um, Love it, it's amazing. And um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I was grateful that he saw eye to eye with me right away. There was no you know, confusion around like how we we're gonna work together at that point. And um, so the rest is history. So you've worked with a lot of big brands, local businesses, you've worked with True. all types of businesses, all types of industries. What's the difference when branding, when you're working with a bigger company versus a local small business? And do you have a preference? Mm. It's a good question. I don't have a pre my preference. I don't really measure companies on their size for if I'm going to align with them or not. It's more of can I believe in what they're offering the world? Can I believe in the product or service that they're contributing? Because we're all contributing something. And if I can't get behind it, then I can't tell an accurate story that I can sell to someone else either. So I will bow out. I'll be like, that's not for me. It doesn't matter how big or how small they are. It doesn't matter. Like, and none of that really matters ultimately as much as like what we're contributing, in my opinion. And so, you know, Ben, again, was aligned with, like, m you know, making something really generous and really beautiful for not only downtown West Palm, but for this area in general. And it's really a unique location. And so I was excited to work with them on this. And, you know, some of the trade-offs are, like, you know, bigger companies might have bigger budgets. They, it's not their first rodeo. So they're not going to be as precious about every little thing. There's plenty of like upsides to working with big companies, but some of the downsides are, you know, like they might be maniacally like controlling about how things are done, or they might be really disorganized with how their um, project management's happening because they're so scattered and it's not the only project, so they're not thinking about it. So, you know, trade offs so, like everything's a trade off. There's nothing perfect. So smaller companies, the some of the advantages are that like with fertile ground like Ben has laid, like I, I get to really play and really run and really shape the foundational thoughts and aspects of everything. And that's really a, a gift. It's really a cool playground to have at my access. So how would you describe the brand of Blind Monk, just the essence of the restaurant? Um, I mean, I would say that, you know, from what I've gleaned from Ben's vision, it's like he wants to bring a casual luxury to West Palm, like in the sense of it's approachable, it's familiar, it's comfortable, but it's super high level, ultimately professional, the, some of the best food you'll ever have, some of the best selection of wine you'll ever get, some, in the, one of the most beautiful spaces you'll ever be in. So it's like kind of this intentional paradox of high-low, you know what I mean? Like where you can really, you know, get the best of both worlds here. You can feel at home and be, have your mind blown with something completely like new and unfamiliar to you, but, like, but it's not out of reach. And so I think that's incredible. So you're very detailed. You're talking so much about the details of everything. You even mentioned the, the menu. How is it working on the menu? If, we, if when we come in and look at the menu, how are we gonna? How is that gonna help enhance the experience? Of course, no. It was a lot of fun working on the menu. If anything, like that was one of the, our favorite parts. I think both of us collectively, because I really kept telling Ben, I was like, when I first saw his original brand, I was like, there's a lot of cool elements here, but I want to like, I want to, I want to bring them out more, and I want more of your voice in the brand too. I want more of you here, because you're really, you're the heart and soul of it. And we need to bring that out of your heart and your, out of your head and put it on this page and like make it, make it palpable. So, you know, we were talking music. We we're talking, we both are big music nerds and, and fans of, you know, a, a wide range of different types of music. But in particular, his favorite era is the 60s and 70s, like classic rock, in particular, the Beatles, in particular, Abbey Road. Like, that's his favorite album. And I was like, let's use this. This is perfect fodder. So I, I was like, the typography from Abbey Road can influence what we do on the menu. And that'll be a secret nod, like a subtle nod, ultimately, to you and to what the vibe of this place is all about. Because it's like you walk in here and it's very, you know, luxury, very polished, beautiful marble countertops. So you might be a little intimidated at first, but then all of a sudden you hear, you know, like, like let it be on the, on the speakers, like pumping out or whatever it may be, you know, like whatever classic rock it may be. There's a range of music that you'll hear here. Um, 
But yeah, so on the back of the album, you might remember there's uh, black and white tiles that say Abbey Road from the actual photo. And that's a font uh, called Century Bold. And so I made my own little black and white tiles and I made them slightly askew so they would feel imperfect on the menu just like they are imperfect in real life. And then the uh, track titles are all uh, written out in a font called um, Gil Sands, which is a really common font of that era and, and even now still. It's like really a beautiful classic font, almost as classic as Helvetica or any of the others that are super popular. It's been around forever, used on a ton of things, really gorgeous. And so I was like, Gil Sands has a broad family, so we can use it for everything, condensed or regular. And it's like, it's perfect for the menu. And then we have like the headers, we have the, we have the font. So that's, that's the idea there. So for those of you that are thinking, oh yeah, just throw a menu together. It's just put some food on, <laughs> just put some words. No, clearly right. there's a lot that we goes into it. into it. Yes, but not, not everyone. But you guys, it's so interesting to hear the whole process, the whole creative process of it all. Now you've been here your whole life. You're newer to West Palm. What do you guys love about having a business downtown? Well, West Palm, right now to me is striking this great balance between you know sort of harnessing the big development that's going on and still supporting uh, local businesses so you know to be in between you know these huge office buildings and hotels that are going up but being able to thrive as a small business like that I think that's pretty unique for West Palm and I give a lot of credit to the DDA and the city for you know not forgetting about us and understanding that it's businesses like mine and the others that give this city a, a, an identity a sense of place you know when i say sense of place that's unique like you have to be in west palm beach to experience the blind monk or in west palm beach to experience some of the other businesses so i'm very grateful that i'm able to operate in in the same space on the same street on the same block at the, as these huge rich developers as just a, a one you know an independent you know small business owner um, i also love the accessibility of, of of this you know like even though this city is growing it's still a small town feel and like especially downtown like i know if i need something or need help i know who to go to and it's a phone call or it's a it's a five minute walk away and, and, and that's still still like that and so um it's great especially in the winter <laughs> <laughs> hear that definitely and you've been all over the world you've traveled to some really interesting cities but you chose west palm to call home it's Why? true uh, i mean it's it's you know hard to not be happy living in paradise right well i mean but beyond that honestly like my my wife and i were before we moved here we lived outside of portland for a little while in a in a little city um called Corbett, um, and it's a kind of in the Mount Hood National Forest, basically. Like, we were in the woods, quite literally, and we're, you know, she's from Arizona originally, I'm from Texas originally, we're both sun babies. We were like, we love being in nature, we love this place, it's incredible, but we were feeling like we just needed that same thing, but with more sun. So we started looking on the map, we, we had, she had a friend out here living in Fort Lauderdale already, and she's like, oh, you should check out West Palm, it's super beautiful, Jupiter is super incredible, so we started looking around, and lo and behold, there's an area called the J.W. Corbett uh, natural preserve and we were like Corbett interesting we were living in Corbett in or Corbett Oregon so we were like that seems like a sign so then we started looking more around that area and we found a, a great little place out in the Loxahatchee the acreage area and you know the rest is history right and here. here you are here, here you are to stay mm -hmm. and look at this partnership it's I great. mean amazing yeah so cool all right if you guys have not been to the blind monk in a while then you need to come back especially if you hasn't haven't been to the to this location it is beautiful gorgeous i'm telling you you guys aren't even open right now but it's a it's a vibe like right when you walk in so you need to check it out ben thank you so much for thank having you. us we so appreciate you thank you for everything that you're doing in this community to have a business for this long downtown to support and to collaborate with other people and just everything that you're doing as a business owner. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. For creating this incredible vibe. And Jeremy, thank you for uh, being here. We so appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you all so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.